We're working on 10.3 um, lecture video B, and we're going to simplify radicals using all the rules for um, exponents. Um, first of all, here we go. Um, you still have to please read the conditions for simplified radicals. Remember, you can never have a radical in the denominator. You can't have any fractions as an exponent in the denominator. You can never have zero in the denominator. Um, but anyways, please go ahead and take a um, look at these. And let's go ahead and get started. Um, I guess I did a couple of them. It's OK. Except for 35, you could not simplify. This is simplified. And. I'm going to move to the next one. So we're going to simplify the cube root of 54. Once again, 54, I'm going to try to figure out, I know it's 9 times 6. 9 is 3 times 3. 6 is 3 times 2. I'm happy. I have 3 3s. So I have 3 cubed times 2, which gives you 54. So I can write this out as the cube root of 3 cubed times 2. The cube root of 3 cubed is 3. And you cannot cube root 2. So that would be your answer. There's another way you could do this. The cube root of 54 is the same thing as the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2 because 27 times 2 is 54. The cube root of 27 is 3. Th and then you can't do anything with the cube root of 2. So I don't care which way you do it. You can either break it down, or you can memorize your perfect square roots, your perfect cube roots, your perfect fourth roots, and your perfect fifth roots. All right. So let me start my timer. And then this one here, the fourth root of 243. Back in the day, I had you memorize these. Um, so I have 243. I'm going to multiply this, but I have no clue. I'm going to use my calculator real quick. I'm just going to use my calculator. And 243, I'm going to divide it by 4. I'm assuming 4. No, it doesn't. 243, I'm going to divide it by 3, 81. So 3 times 81 is um, 243. 81 is 9 times 9. And 9s are 3 and 3, 3 and 3. So because it's a fourth root, I want to have it to the fourth power. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and I actually have 5 of them. But I'm going to write it out like this. 3 to the 4th times 3 to the 1st is really 3 to the 5th power, and that's what this ends up being. I didn't want to write 3 to the 5th power because I, I have a 4th root, and I need this to be 4. So when you take the 4th root of something to the 4th power, it's going to be 3. So the 3 comes out. And I cannot take the fourth power of this three. It's stuck underneath there. Now, if you wanted to, if you knew your perfect fourth roots, you could do this. You could say the fourth root of 81 times the fourth root of three. That gives you 81 times three is 243. The fourth root of 81 is three, but you cannot take the fourth root of this three. So I don't care again which way you do the problem. There you go. All right, next one. Whoops. The next one is simplify. We have the square root of 25p to the 7th. I'm a visual learner. I like to write them all out. I know what the square root of 25 is. It's 5. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that on the outside. Now my p to the 7th. I know that p squared raised to the, actually I want to say p to the third, raised to the second power is p to the sixth. And p to the sixth times p to the first is p to the seventh. So when you square root something that is squared, whatever's being squared comes out. So that's going to be p to the third. And then the p stays under. And that's all you can do. Okay.
The next one is the square root of 72. The square root of 72 is the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. The square root of 36 is 6, and you cannot square root 2. So what I like to do is make myself a radical. I know that the 6 is going to come out, and the 2 is going to stay under because there's nothing else you can do. I also want to write out um, 36 times 2 here. I'm going to write out y squared and y. I'm going to put everything in squares, okay? And then a lonely x here. y squared times y to the first is y to the third, so we're good. So when I square root y squared, the y comes out, and this y stays under. And then I can't do anything with the x. The x stays under. So your answer is going to be 6y square root of, normally in algebra we want the x to be written first, so I'm just going to write it out like that. Okay? And that's the easiest way to do that problem. Um, okay, so let's go to the next problem. Um, the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. That I know because negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 times negative 3 is a negative 27. And then a cube root of, I went ahead and did that negative 27 right away because I just automatically knew that a negative 3 to the third power is a negative 27. So now y to the seventh. Because it's a cube root, I need it written with a cube. So I'm going to have y to the second raised to the third power, which is y to the sixth, times y, which will give you y to the seventh. My next one is going to be x to the third, x to the second, because that also is x to the fifth. My next one's going to be z to the second raised to the third power. The reason why I need it to the third power is because it's um, the cube root. And if it's the cube root, I want to be able to take out um, whatever's cubed. So I have negative 3, and then I have the cube root of something. So whatever I take out, I take out. Whatever I leave under, I leave under. So the cube root of y squared cubed, whatever's being cubed comes out. That's going to be y squared. This y, though, stays under. Now, this cube root of x cubed, the x comes out, and this x squared stays under. Now, the cube root of y squared cubed, whatever's being cubed comes out, so that's going to be z to the second. Now, in algebra, we normally want them in alphabetical order, so it should be a negative 3, x, y to the second, z to the second, cube root, x squared, y. And there you go. That's your answer. All right, next one. Again, this is to the fourth power. So the negative is on the outside. Ignore the negative. It is on the outside. So what I'm going to have is the fourth root. I'll break it up. Um, 2 to the fourth power times 2 to the first power gives you 2 to the fifth. And the reason why I know that is um, 16 and 2, 4 and 4, 2 and 2, 2 and 2. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So 2 to the fifth power is 32. I broke it up so that I can have something to the fourth power, but 2 to the fourth power times 2 to the first power is just 2 to the fifth power. Now the next one. I'm going to do b to the fourth power. I didn't need to write that like that. That looks just really weird, so I'm not going to do that. Um, this is going to be b to the fourth power times b to the third power. When you multiply powers, you add the exponents. So this is just b to the seventh power. That's all it is. And for some reason, I forgot the a. So sorry. That is going to be a to the fourth power times a to the first power, because that's going to give you a to the fifth power. So your answer is going to be is this. I'm going to go ahead and write the fourth root here. Whatever has a, a fourth power to it, it can come out. So the 2 to the fourth power, the 2 comes out. This 2 to the first power stays under. I'm going to jump over to a. 
a to the fourth power, the a comes out, a to the first power stays under. B to the fourth power comes out, the B comes out, because when you take the fourth root of B to the fourth, the B comes out. When you take the fourth root of B cubed, you can't do that, so that stays under. And you're finished. Now it looks kind of messy, so I'm just going to rewrite it. All right, that's it for that one. And let's see how many more we go. We only have eight minutes left. And, oh, wow, I'm, I'll be doing this for a while, so I'll have to do C. So let me try to get as many as I possibly can. Let me get back to what I was doing. Sorry. All right, let me scoot these over. And we are going to simplify, again, some more radicals. Um, so here we go. So first of all, this is the 12th root of 2 cubed. Well, this is not going to help me. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to use all those rules that we learned before. My base is 2. This number right here is your numerator. This number right here is your um, denominator. So I can rewrite this as 2 to the 1 fourth power, which is the same thing as the fourth root of 2, technically. Okay, um, but they wanted your answer in radical form, so this would be considered in radical form. So I personally would turn these into um, exponential and then reduce it down. The next one, my base is t, my, ex my numerator is 2, my denominator is 6. That's going to give you t to the 1 -third. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 three times. They want you to write this as a radical, so remember the denominator is your index and it's going to be t to the first power. All right. Next one. Um, this is just letting you, and I'll show you how to do a problem with this, because these both have a k, so the k's actually can cancel out, but I'll show you what that means. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, first of all, simply by rewrite or writing under the same radical. So we have... 5 to the 1 half times 4 to the 1 third. What you want to do is you want to put it under the same. Um, I'm going to simplify the 4. I'm going to just see what happens. These always get me sometimes. 2 squared to the 1 third power. So I get 5 to the 1 half times 2 to the two-thirds power. I need to get them both to have the same, um, oh, what do you call it, denominators, okay? So I need them both to be six. So if I need them both to be six, this one's going to be six, and this one's going to be six. And what I'm going to do is this. If I times this by three, I've got to times this by three. So this is going to be three. If I times this by 2, I'm going to times this by 2, and that's going to be 4. So now what you're going to do is you're going to have the 6th root of 5 to the 3rd times 2 to the 4th. And you're finished. That's all it says. Simplify by writing under the same radical. They want you to have the same index. Okay? That is pretty much it. Um, the way they explain it, probably not the most friendliest. However, um, it's basically a to the um, km over kn. The k's would cancel and you're left with a m over n. <coughs> so that's pretty much what it's saying that you, you can do. Um, but anyways, let's move on to the next one. Now, the next problem is the Pythagorean theorem. Now, um, I have only a few minutes left, and since these are going to take me a few minutes to do the Pythagorean theorem, actually, it won't take, it might. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll do the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared when you have a right triangle. These are the legs of the right triangle. This is the hypotenuse. So if find the length of the unknown 
sign in each triangle. So on this one, you're trying to find the hypotenuse. These are the legs. So it's going to be 14 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. 14 squared is 196 plus 64 equals C squared. 196 plus 64, that's a 0, that's a 6, that's a 260 equals C squared, right? That's 10, carry the 1, that's 10, plus 6 is 16, carry the 1, that's, yep, 260. Now to get C squared, to get rid of C squared, to make it C, to get rid of the square, you're going to square root both sides, and C is going to equal either a positive or a negative square root of 220, two, sorry, 260. Now, because we're talking about distance, the only positive answer is the square root of 260 equals C. We don't have to worry about the negative. Now, the square root of 260, right now, you guys, I can't think of any number multiplied something that gives you 260. So I'm going to use the factor tree just to kind of help me. 2 times 130, 2 times 65, um, and that's about it. So I know 2 squared times 65. So I know that 4 times 65 is 260. So the square root of 4 is 2, and I cannot reduce 65. So this is going to be 2 square roots of 65 equals C. You can do it both ways. Does that matter? This is the way I usually do it. But if I can't find out what the perfect number, square root is, I plug it in there. All right.